I just would love viewers and for others, um, starting with you, to appreciate how humiliating it is for a teacher um, at the end of one's career to be let out in front of one's students. Um, you know, it was they can only do that if I was an immediate harm to the students, that I was considered an immediate harm because I was telling them the truth. Imagine being a history teacher who gets suspended for teaching history. That's what one BC high school teacher claims is his current reality after he dared to let students know historical truths that contradicted the mainstream narrative on what was actually discovered last year at the former Kamloops Indian Residential School. Drea Humphrey here with Rebel News, and you may want to grab yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of kombucha because you're not going to want to miss a minute of this interview with Cancel Culture's latest victim, Jim McMurtry. Mr. McMurtry, as I'm sure his students call him, is the son of former Ontario MLA and retired Chief Justice of Ontario, Roy McMurtry. The Honorable Roy McMurtry is known for being a social justice and human rights defender to the point that he even received a threatening letter, which he calls a badge of honor from former Ku Klux Klan head Grand Wizard David Duke back in 1977. The letter was a stop or else warning after members of the Western Guard, an unofficial Toronto-based arm of the KKK, were prosecuted for some of their racial violence. While Roy McMurtry's son Jim did take a run for politics like his father when he ran as a Liberal MP candidate, he's made the most of his career instead serving as an award-winning educator for nearly 40 years. That was until March 31st of last year when he says after teachers were asked to discuss the then-recent claim that the remains of 215 children were found buried at the former Kamloops Indian Residential School, he was marched out of an Abbotsford High School math class that he was substituting for and promptly put on an eight-month suspension. Why? Because the expert in history dared to educate his students on the most common cause of death at the time such schools ran, which is easily verifiable as illnesses, especially tuberculosis. In fact, the disease was so prevalent at the time that just a 20-minute drive away from the former Kamloops Indian Residential School is the Tranquil Sanatorium which was built to treat hundreds of tuberculosis patients and ran as such until the disease was no longer running rampant in the late 1950s. But because that little bit of history doesn't quite align with the prominent false narrative, which is still swarming, which is that 215 murdered children's bodies had been discovered in a mass grave at the school, the Abbotsford School District Dean Mr. McMurtry's comments as inflammatory, inappropriate, insensitive, and contrary to the district's message of condolences and reconciliation. Now, those of you who have watched my Rebel News exclusive documentary called Kamloops The Buried Truth by subscribing at rebelnewsplus.com know that such comments are no such thing. The Tecumlupte Shishwemek Band government never said they found a mass grave. And to date, not a single body, let alone murdered child's body, has ever been discovered even in an individual unmarked grave at the school's site. Now, listen to this. Just a couple of months ago, a Chilliwack, B.C. teacher named Lyle Nickel, who allegedly hugged students, kissed one on the forehead, was meeting students outside of school for lunch, drunk texting them, and even telling one of them how much he loves them, was suspended for one month. That's right, one month. Yet you're about to hear Jim's side of the story while he's still off work awaiting the fate of his career since the Abbotsford School District has recommended he be terminated. But you should also know that I did reach out to that district so that you could be informed on their side of the story with a series of allegations against McMurtry as well. Those series of allegations include that he didn't wear his PPE correctly and that he made inappropriate jokes. I also wanted to know if teachers in their district were educated about or allowed to inform students without the fear of being disciplined about what was actually discovered at Kamloops Indian Residential School last year. 
you know, such as ground-penetrating radar, cannot confirm if there are bodies underground, and that even the expert whose report is what started the discovery claim said she found 200 probable targets of interest rather than 215 children's remains, and that only excavation would be able to determine what's actually buried there. I also wanted to know, since Mr. McMurtry was dragged out of his class for teaching outside of their box, did their district make any steps to redact the misinformation that they had spread about the former residential school, like in this tweet, when they stated that there were 215 children's remains found in a mass grave? Crickets. Silence. No response. But do you know who refuses to be silent about this? Mr. McMurtry. All right, Jim, thanks for having us in your place to tell the world about your important story that you're going through right now. Why don't you start explaining your history with education? Well, thank you very much. I'm someone who uh, did a PhD at the University of Toronto. Um, I wanted to be um, a professor. The opportunity didn't come my way. Became a high school teacher, didn't leave, loved it, was a principal for a number of years lived in different parts of Canada, um, taught him, and, uh, and was administrator in Switzerland, so I've had uh, interesting opportunities. Um, but mostly, um, yeah, teacher. Wow, that is a good resume. Yet here you are at home for over two years, not able to get into the classroom and teach the minds of the future. Tell us briefly uh, what's going on. Why is that the case? Well, if I may say that I was first suspended seven months and then a second time for eight months, and then there's all sorts of other things that prevent me from going back. And I think there's it's relating to cancel culture, that there's a war in words. But for many people, you know, they look at people in the media, um, you know, Jordan Peterson and Lindsay Shepard, Rex Murphy, who um, are, are someone, Wendy Mesley, um, uh, Don Cherry, that sort of thing, and you don't really think of... It's important for, you know, what happens to teachers because there's many of us. But I think it's in many ways more important because the children, they need, they need their advocates. And I think children in the classroom want to have debate. They want to be able to have a different opinion. They want to be able to question and to reflect and to critically think. All these things that are, schools are supposed to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm that. I'm just somebody that um, felt the Canadian schools were really great and saw that there was um, storm clouds in the distance and now they're over top of us. And, um, and I think it's really sad that there's so many topics that are now off the table. Now, you're also a history teacher, sticking to the facts with the history. And one of the reasons why you are in so much trouble and waiting to have your fate decided for you is because you spoke some truths about the deaths that happened during the residential school. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I'd be happy to do it. So I was at a school, and because I'd had difficulty with my employer, I asked to be a teacher in calm, and I speak French, so there was a need to have a, a regular teacher in calm for French. And I went in front of a grade 12 calculus class, but it was May 31st, a year ago, 2021, and news had come about the 215 children who were found in a mass grave, presumably murdered if they're in a mass grave. And, um, and I only said one thing that was counter to the narrative, um, because kids were talking about priests and nuns being murderers and, and torturers and, and having um, done other things to, um, to um, violate you know, um, children. Um, I said, because I'm, I, um, I'm well read in the area as a history teacher, uh, that uh, most of the children in residential schools died from disease, such as tuberculosis. I wasn't trying to be controversial. I was already um, under suspension at the time, but everything was going fine. Um, but as soon as I said that, I upset some kids in the class because they really believed that the kids had been murdered. And, um, and uh, about 15 minutes later, we had a little break. And then at the end of the break, well, I guess one of the girls had gone down and talked to a guidance counselor, and the guidance counselor talked to the principal. And the principal called, talked to my employer, and the employer decided to remove me from the school. So I was walked out, um, and I didn't really understand why, because I thought it had a... Uh, oh, by the way, all the teachers were supposed to, at that time, that day, talk about what the news was, the 215 children found in a mass grave. And um, so I didn't know what I had said wrong, even. 
And uh, it was really, again, that it was off script in that way, that it wasn't disease, it was murder. Now, of course, no one's dug up any graves in Kamloops because people know it's not true. And there were only 51 children um, that ever died while enrolled at the school, and they have the death certificates, and they know where the, they died, mostly in the local hospital or back on the reserve. So the story is complete fabrication, but it's cost me my career. Well, some people watching and hearing what you're saying may also have some of the same feelings that your students had when you spoke some of that. But myself and the BC producer behind the camera, Matt Brevener, do know what you're talking about. In fact, if you go to KamloopsDocumentary.com, you can find a two-day investigative documentary that we did together to just show that, you know, after more than a year, there have been no bodies discovered for the claim that was once told to the world that 215 kids were found. Now, that you and I know is controversial, but to actually be suspended for that... Why do you think that's happening? Okay, and if I just say, just in anticipation of that, I just would love viewers and for others, um, starting with you, to appreciate how humiliating it is for a teacher um, at the end of one's career to be let out in front of one's students. Um, you know, it was they can only do that if I was an immediate harm to the students that I was considered an immediate harm because I was telling them the truth. Well, I think the whole idea behind council culture is people use their institutions to give attention to themselves. I think people like our prime minister really want to present themselves as the savior of the people. Um, they want to invent all sorts of things that are really horrible about Canada's past, even though Canada is one of the most extraordinary countries in the world today and certainly back then too. Um, I think it's to it's it's just um, a way of getting everybody to look at them and pretend that that they're able to right all the wrongs in history, and and of course I think they they make them worse. All they do is is they create falsehoods and, and blood libels against people who like the priests and nuns, like the oblate priests and the and sisters of Saint Anne who gave their lives over to the children, the Camelot's Reserve School. So the idea that it'd be 215 dead children in a mass grave in Kamloops, when you said it went around the world, it also said that there were bodies found of children as young as three. That they haven't even found a grave. So it's just it's the most interesting story. The New York Times, Washington Post, the Times of London, like all these newspapers, on the on on the basis of you know one person saying something that was completely fabulous, you know, would all of a sudden accept as truth. And here I am as a teacher, you know, with a lot of degrees and a lot of experience in the classroom and a lot of publications, um, nobody believes me. And yet I'm saying things that are you know, established. I would never say to students, I don't want students to think like I do, I would hate that. I, I show them the facts, the established facts, and let them create their own perspective and their own interpretation. It's not my business to tell them how to, how to think, but I certainly can help lead them to, you know, to, to a credible account of history, an honest appraisal of history. But that's not what the school system is doing. The school system is, is right now is run by people who want to manipulate children, want to get a bunch of converts into this radical, hard-left cause of, 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 of creating a society where there's equality between all groups. And, uh, and it's, you know, we can try and raise one group, but, to, but another way of doing it, of course, is to lower other groups. And, uh, and I just think this is so unfair, and particularly, again, to the men and women who devoted themselves to educating um, Indigenous youth. Well, certainly division is becoming a norm in society these days, unfortunately. I think it's important for our viewers to know that this isn't your first time, your first brush with controversy. In fact, previously you were found guilty of misconduct, professional misconduct. Maybe speak to that uh, for our viewers. Sure. Now, um, I've only been um, in trouble um, with this new board. So three years ago, I moved to a new district. And the Abbotsford School District, where I um, still technically work, um, they were giving out um, um, Bibles up until, um, Gideon Bibles up until 2016. And the reason they were doing that is because it's a Christian community, and presumably they wanted to um, disseminate the values of the community. And, and, uh, and it's just so it's interesting, when I went there and went into the classroom, I was so worried that I that you know I was so careful to do to not to do anything that would in any way inflame local religious opinion, 
And, and yet that is, you know, that's the thing that's been the saving grace for me. Because I think um, what I'm sensing from the religious community in Abbotsford is that they, you know, that they, they, they don't want to, um, they don't want to impugn. They want to lift up. They want to inspire. And it's just so different from what I'm experiencing. This whole idea of I'm supposed to say, you know, Europeans are terrible and, and all men are terrible and, and all straight people are terrible. And, and, and it's, just, it's just so contrary um, to what my job is. Now, um, so I, I, I haven't been found guilty of professional misconduct ever. And quite, I, I've won two teaching awards. Um, but my employer in Abbotsford um, put me on an... Um, put me, um, suspended me and investigated me, um, for absolutely nothing. And the union is grieving that. Um, it just hasn't, it's been three years and it still hasn't come up. Um, I think my employer realized it didn't have anything. So they, what they do with investigations is they, they're not trying to ferret out the truth. They're trying to, um, build their case. And so they started a second investigation when I told you that I was, I didn't say all these children had been murdered. Um, and that was closed with a recommendation to have me terminated. But I haven't been found guilty of anything. Mm-hmm. I haven't been in front of the, um, the British Columbia has a regulation board for, called the Teacher Regulation um, Branch um, um, for, for teachers, and uh, I haven't been in front of them. I, I'm, I've, I've got an appeal waiting. But they're so nervous about me that they went to a second investigation, and they went to, again, a recommendation for, for dismissal, because they know there's a problem with me. And the problem is that everything I say is right, that you don't take advantage of children. You don't lie to children. You don't decide anything for children. You don't push puberty blockers before <laughs> someone is old enough to decide for him or herself to do something so, so drastic. You don't get into, you know, you don't interfere with a parent's relationship with a child. You don't play games and hide secrets from kids. And in, in, in more in relation to me, you don't denigrate one race or race or group of people to, to raise others. You don't shame white children in the classroom to make non-white children feel better. I, I just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. If I, I think my goal as a teacher and everybody's goal in the educational world should be to make every kid feel a little bit better about him or herself. You see, I'm not, I'm not, didn't say they, did I? And, 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 you know, these, the pronouns, it's unbelievable. There are teachers in Canada who have been, lost their jobs because they don't want to use the, the, the pronouns. So what's happening is a group of people, it's very, to me, it's very Marxist, communistic, it's very totalitarian, Orwellian, is that they, they want to have everybody, not just employees, but students, use the language of a, of a, of a group of people who are manipulating for their own self-interest, for their own um, promotion, um, into, in, into adopting, really, it's become a cult. I think the whole woke thing, postmodernism, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion, all these lovely words that are the opposite from what they mean, you know, war is peace, and it's, again, um, it's, it's just, it's awful. I, um, I, you know, if the fact that they can say I'm guilty of professional misconduct to me is, is, is nothing but um, laughable because they know that they are guilty themselves. And I think the end result of, of this will be that there is going to be an internal investigation of my district and how this can come about. And, and, and uh, a lot of people say, oh, that won't happen because they have all the power. And I say, no, 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 I don't think in the end. I think in the end, the kids have the power. It's a weird thing to say, but as a teacher, if you can do anything, you know, in talking about very, talk about many different subjects with students, if they like you and see you as a good person, it doesn't matter if you say things that their parents don't like. The parents see you through their children. And I think, you know, it's just too early still for this, uh, this, this new ideology. This, as I said earlier, the storm cloud that's come across, it will pass because it's, it's just it's absolutely nonsensical. But I think when parents start to see that children aren't making up their own minds about their sexuality, about, about um, how they view themselves, how they view other groups, other people in society, that they always have to um, follow what others are telling them. I think they're going to be quite appalled. I think, again, the most important thing is uh, the word education is from the Latin and Greek, educere or educare, meaning to develop and to lead out. It's not to indoctrinate. It's not to impose it's not to get them to, to be like us or to whatever we are. I think it's just such an incredible dereliction of, of educational duty. 
Well, you certainly gave a lot of nuggets for people to consider today. What message do you have for other teachers who maybe feel the same way you do? Maybe they feel muzzled when it comes to educating their students and what's next for you? Well, I think teachers have to realize that, you know, why do they became teachers? I certainly understand it's really, really difficult to, to be me because um, my career's over. You know, I've been threatened for a few years now because I'm just wanting kids to, to entertain different perspectives on sensitive issues. It's not, I would never have one viewpoint for my students. And I think it's this absolute outrage that this is what's happening. And um, I, so I say to teachers, if there's anything to do, it's to get stronger. And, and, and don't, don't do what I've done, which is to say, absolutely, no, I'm not going to go back on my principles. And you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong to indoctrinate children. But it would be a lot easier for teachers that are being run out of the profession like me if there are more teachers in the classroom who are, you know, who are talking about these issues and were less afraid. Um, I just would maybe mention the, a Burke quote that really stu- sticks in my head. Um, all that it takes for the triumph of evil is for good men and women to do nothing. And I think there's far too teacher, too many teachers, too many parents, too many students, too many people doing nothing. They know it's wrong. Thank you so much for being on Rebel News. Oh, it's a pleasure meeting you, Drea. If you're not a fan of truth being canceled, check out our exclusive investigative documentary, Kamloops, The Buried Truth. You can do so by becoming a rebelnewsplus.com subscriber, which also helps support our independent journalism.